Oh, people! Good morning, good morning, good morning. The sun is shining like hell on this Saturday morning. You know who it is, Arsenio Buck reporting live from Bangkok. It has been a very, very turbulent 50 hours for me. A lot of miscommunication with me and my friend, but all is well. My friend from Vietnam, we're talking cancel- flight cancellations, lost luggage, craziness. But that does not stop me from doing anything, especially including my podcast. So it is the dawn. It is the dawn of a gorgeous, what is going to be a very, very gorgeous weekend. I've got so many different opportunities that have came into my life. The most, the greatest thing yesterday that I'm going to point out, what I'm so grateful for in times of just turbulence. Okay. I'm talking about, where's my friend? Oh my God. I can't see her. Where's the, 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 she wasn't at the airport. She had to wait five hours to get her luggage. It was just mayhem. But in the midst of all that negativity, I was walking down the street and I saw a black woman. Now, the thing is, as an African-American, especially living in Thailand and a country overseas in a country, blah, 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 blah. I've told you the story just so many times. But just seeing your own kind. And it's crazy because she glanced at me and then she glanced at me again. And I knew she was African-American and she was dressed very professionally and she had a pearl white smile, short hair, and it was just so amazing to get that sort of reception, especially from your own kind in a country that's 10,000 miles away from your native, you know, your my native country in America. And that made my day. In the midst of everything, that made my day. And especially getting a gorgeous opportunity to do something so great next week uh, and other people approaching me in terms of wanting my services. I'm just so grateful and I'm thankful, you know, of course, for the opportunity of, of course, being here in Thailand for another day. (laughs) With that being said, people, I want to tell you guys some things. Now, of course, you guys have been influenced throughout the course of your lives, okay, to do things that others tell you to do. Remember what, you know, what Steve Jobs said. He said, don't live in dogma. That's living through the opinions and the ideas of other people. Man, Steve Steve Jobs, he had a crazy, man, when he was between 18 and 22 years old, oh my God, he said he was so broke that he had to go walk a long time to a church. I think it was a church or a school. Uh, to get a free meal every evening, I think he said. And he said that was the, those were some of the best times of his life. And it's crazy because what he ended up developing in, and especially, you know, uh, what is it? The mass amount of communication that the world has received on behalf of him. It would have never been done if he listened to the opinions of others. Now, of course, man... I'm going to tell you American society. Now, of course, I was on uh, to- Tony Robbins. Uh, I was watching. He actually has his I'm Not a Guru on YouTube. So I was actually watching that. And I looked at some of the comments. And, of course, the comments are crazy. Now, of course, there were some some Jesus people out there who were saying all types of things in, go- in regards to Jesus, blah, 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 blah. But there were so many people saying, how can people even understand this? And then someone asked, where do you work? And they said, Walmart. And it's like. Why does American society continue to always berate others? I don't understand that people continue to live in mediocrity and not just take a leap of faith. See, of course, with The Secret, The Secret made landfall just over uh, 10 years ago now, a decade. So many people would just talk so bad about the secret. This stuff is so stupid. How can people believe? And it's like, I'm sorry, what do you do? I work at 7-Eleven. Stop asking me. And it's like, oh, my God. And it's not even, it's, it's nothing that you even, it's not even like a business opportunity that you're trying to propose to this specific individual. It's just a matter of saying, guess what? Write down 10 things that you're grateful for every morning. No, that's stupid. Ah. <sighs> See, those are people that just cannot accept change. Those are people who have been controlled so heavily by the media. Those are the people that you see on all media outlets. We're talking from Bangkok Post all the way to CNN to Fox News, the white media that has controlled this entire world. These people continue to be controlled 
by the influence of media. Now, we could go into knowledge, education, universities, schools. We told that. What were we taught our entire lives? You know, it's crazy because just about five months, well, not even five months ago, probably about a year and a half ago, I used to work at a school. And it's crazy because while I worked there, the students were learning so much because conversation, obviously, in a foreign country is the biggest thing. You go to Japan, you teach in these schools, these students probably know more grammar than you do, but they can't even strike up a conversation. And then about a year and a half ago, there was a particular individual at school, one of the teachers. She's like, oh, it just seems like your classes are just too relaxed. They're too relaxed. You're having too much fun. Why do you just keep talking? And I'm like, as an educator, as an educator, getting points across anything that's in the history books, the math books, that's all blah, 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 blah. I'm teaching about life. See, a lot of people just do not understand the elements of being an educator, a communicator, an orator. A lot of people just want you to do it by the book, nothing else, hush, quiet, do it, that's it, done. And the thing is, that's not how I work. That's not how I did work. And that's not how I ever will work. I will implement so many different things, thinking strategies into my lessons. Of course, being at, you know, being at my current job right now and being a person of influence to a lot of people around the world right now. I got people in Mexico and Canada who are listening to me now. Big shout out to you guys. And I'm not going to sit here and just teach Something from the book that we've been learning the past 150 years since the school system started. We used to learn the same junk and we're still learning the same junk. Now, how is that going to help you make money? It's crazy because I was taught, hey, go to university, get a degree. You'll have a lot of money at the end. That's BS. That never was. I can't remember a specific time, moment in time in my life where, hey, once I graduate with a bachelor's degree, I'm going to have so many great, I'm going to have so many great jobs lined up. That's BS. That's all BS. And the thing is, a lot of people, they say you have to work very hard for money. You have to work hard for money. You have to keep brown nose for money. You have to kiss ass for money. You have to do so many things for money. That's not true. That's not true. It's the gifts within you. What can you give to society? Whereas society can benefit from the product that you are delivering. See, things that are being taught in the classroom right now, that doesn't teach, man, they don't teach you anything about that. That's why I love Finland. Finland completely abolished all subjects at their schools. They abolished them. They said, we're going to teach the individual skills in order for students in America and all around the world that they could give, they could take the, these unique qualities within them, bring them out and give them to the world so they could benefit from it. Don't live everyone else's or don't live anyone else's life assignment or opinion. There are so many people who are going to some of the most prestigious universities in America. Oh, I've graduated from Yale and I'm a I graduated from Kungula, whatever. All these fraternities, sororities, I don't give a damn. What have you done to people's lives? Or what have you done for people to whereas they have benefited from you? See, a lot of people in American society can be very, very selfish, ego driven. I graduated from here, therefore I'm better than you. See, that's exactly why America is in the state it is right now. It's amazing. And so what am I trying to tell you? Well, the thing is, a lot of people, especially in Asian culture, Korea, Japan, China, you name it. What do parents tell you? In Asian culture in general, especially in Thailand, be a doctor. Do you want to be a doctor? No. What is it that you want to do? It's crazy. I asked one of my students recently. I was like, what do you really want to do? She's like, well, I would love to go to America and get a master's in business. Okay, then after that, I don't know. See, that you're, you're following the influence and probably other people's lives. Just because other people are going to America to study, you want to do the same thing so you can be on the same level as them. No. Figure out the gifts within you. What is your life purpose statement? See, I'm going to have to make another podcast on life purpose because a lot of people aren't, they're not, they're just not living out their purpose in life. Nobody has written down their life purpose statement. And I'm going to have to talk about that because I actually wrote that down at the beginning of the year in Napoleon Hill's Law of Success. I wrote it down in the book because he guides you 
to what is your life? Is your life purpose is to be a doctor and to change people's lives? Well, the thing is, medicine isn't necessarily good. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Medicine isn't necessarily good. You go to the doctor rather than the doctor is saying, hey, you know what? I'm not going to treat the symptoms. I'm going to treat what is the core of the problem. Now, you keep getting sick. I'm going to keep giving you medicine and you're going to get better. But then again, your body is going to be very, very vulnerable to more sickness. If you keep using to say your liver is going to be destroyed. How come the doctor doesn't sit down and say, OK, listen, I see you're sick. What we're going to do, we're going to switch up your your diet. We're going to give you more vitamin C because it's lacking right now. We're going to look at this. We're going to look. Nope, nope, nope. Doctors do not do that because medicine is a multi-million dollar, multi-billion dollar organization out there. So many people benefit from people getting sick, and it's sickening. So, okay, you want to become a doctor, but what are you going to do to benefit society? See, I have one uh, a particular student who's going to become an epidemiologist. Now, she's going to be doing analysts on all types of diseases, causes, and stuff like that. That's a huge benefit to society. If you're going into the business world, how can you help other people? See, that's why I love Tony Robbins, going back to him. Because a lot of people berate him for what he does. But yet he's a billion dollar industry in his in its own right. And you know what he's done? Every Thanksgiving, he's given millions upon millions of families dinners. What have you done? People commenting on YouTube saying, this is such a fallacy. What have you done to help society? Nothing. See, you can't point fingers at other people for them doing great when you don't do a damn thing for society. You can't point fingers for saying... Oh, you're not doing good because you talk to your students too much or you're not good enough because you're black or you're not good enough because you're white. You're not good enough because you're Asian, but you don't do a damn thing. See, instead of pointing fingers and judging people, you need to begin to figure out what your life assignment is and live through it without listening to other people because we could be directed through the opinions and media and everything, just about everything. And it's so sad because... How can other people justify it? How can you justify what everyone else is saying about you? You know, if someone says, oh, you're too black, you start thinking like, oh, my God, what if, what if, I'm, what if I am black? And you know what? I've had, I've had a number of students that have changed the color of their skin here in Thailand because the influence of other people saying that they're too black, although Thai people are naturally supposed to be a very caramel color. It's amazing how we give up our dream career in arts and everything, you know, or we take over the family business when we're not even suited to be, you know, you know, we're not, we're uninspired for that daily routine. So many different things that are out there. (sighs) People, you need to figure out what your life purpose is. So what I'm going to figure out, what I'm going to do in the next podcast, we're going to sit through, we're going to figure out some life purpose statements because so many people are living through the lives and opinions of other people. And it's got to come to an end. So with that being said, people, stay tuned for my next podcast, which will be coming up very, very soon within the next day or two, because I'm going to have another crazy day today. Well, it could be, well, we'll see, we'll see. But yes, stay tuned. It's going to be happening this weekend. And with that being said, if you guys have any questions, at AJ in Thailand, of course. Uh, And until then, until then, Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, and evening. This is your host, Arsenio, of course, over and out.